Okay, so you wanna calculate how many calories do you need to eat in a day? So you need two things. You gotta find out how many calories are you using, not doing anything. This is called your resting energy expenditure or your basal metabolic rate or your resting metabolic rate. They're all the same thing. So what you need to do is you need to figure that out, which I'm gonna put an equation right here that you can use to figure that out for yourself. Now it's a little different for males and females, but uh, I'll put them both up there and you can just use whichever one fits you. Okay, so after you have used that equation to figure out how many calories you're using, not doing anything, resting, the equation is for if you were gonna rest all 24 hours of the day, just laying on the floor, that's how many calories you're gonna burn. Approximate, right? It's all estimates. Next, after that, what you need to do is you need to account for your activity. All of your activity for the day. Easiest way to do this is multiply whatever you get when you use this equation. Multiply by anywhere from one, as if you were doing nothing all day, up to two. So if you're really highly active, you're gonna use two. And I mean like triathlete, marathon runner, lots and lots of calories burned. You're gonna use times two. So you take your resting energy expenditure times your activity. This will give you how many calories that you need for a day to maintain your weight, just to cancel out, right? To cancel out basic metabolic activity for your body plus activity cancels out. Now if you're Okay, so one thing to take into consideration when you're messing with these with these equations is that calories are always an estimate. Okay? So the calories in your food, what's on the package, that's an estimate. Now there's ways that you can get pretty close to uh, finding out how many calories are in the food that you're eating but it's still an estimate, right? It's rough. Now, the other thing is this equation is also an estimate. The activity is also an estimate. So calories is always a whole bunch of estimation. The closest way that you can get to knowing how many calories you're using is a method called indirect calorimetry. Now this is where you go, you probably lay down or sit in a chair and they'll hook you up to this mask that measures how much oxygen you're utilizing just laying there. And that'll give you a, a pretty accurate number of how many calories you're using just laying there, right? But then you still have to account for your activity, which is the hard part. So let me give you an example, because I can only speak for myself, right? So for me, not losing any weight, not gaining any weight, right? I take my resting energy expenditure using this equation, and this equation has been, it's been proven to be pretty accurate. I mean, compared to other equations out there, it's pretty, there's some studies out there that say this one is one of the more accurate ones. So anyway, like I was saying, so using this equation, my resting energy expenditure comes out to about 1850, right? And I've also done indirect calorimetry and my number came out to about 1900. So pretty accurate right? The activity is what's not so accurate because people always overestimate how many calories they're using. Either going by what the treadmill or the elliptical, you know, you put your hands on the little thing and it'll tell you, right, how many calories you've burned. This doesn't account for your age, your height, your weight. It doesn't account for any of that stuff. All it does is take your heart rate and then give you a number. That's not, there's no way that can be accurate. Right, like that's, it's just not accurate at all. So if you're relying on those numbers to figure out how many calories you burn, it's probably way off, right? If you're just guessing how many calories you burn, like, oh, I lift a lot of weights. Well, lifting weights doesn't really burn that many calories, right? So for myself, that's what I do, is I, I lift weights probably five times a week. And then one day I do, uh, circuit training type of thing for uh, for cardio. So when I multiply my resting energy expenditure by 1.5, that's the number of calories that gets me 
to not losing any weight, not gaining any weight, just holding steady. I got plenty of energy. I don't feel tired. I also don't feel like I've eaten too much. 1.5. And I go to the gym every day. I'm there for probably 90 minutes, which I think is probably, I mean, most gym goers, that's probably about average. 60 to 90 minutes lifting weights. Um, some people do, you know, the bodybuilders and stuff will do their hour of cardio every day. Like that might be a little different. You might be using a little bit more, but those people might also be eating a little bit more. So it all evens out. But so my point is that don't overestimate how many calories you're using, right? Because then you'll find doing these equations that you're going to end up, you're going to end up getting some crazy numbers like 3,500 calories or something when you don't need near that much. Now I've used quite a few apps, you know, apps on your phone that they'll, they, they do the same thing. They, they'll take your, your age, your height, your weight, and all that stuff, and they'll try to guess your activity levels. They always ask you how active are you, how many times you go to the gym, you know, yada, yada. That's what they're doing, is they have put one of these equations in their app to tell you how many calories you need to be eating. Then what they'll do is they'll take a generic formula for weight loss or weight gain or whatever, you know, they'll, they'll add 200 or add 300 calories or minus 200 or minus 300 if you're trying to lose weight, you know, and that's what will give you a number for a goal. Okay. Now, another thing that's also an estimate is your body's ability to adapt. Everyone has this, a different level of adaptation when it comes to calorie deficits and calorie excess. I mean, Again, using myself for example, if I am in a 200 calorie deficit, I start losing weight. But if I'm in a 500 calorie surplus, my weight, my body just tears right through it. Doesn't even, doesn't even phase me. So if I wanna gain weight, I have to be at my resting energy expenditure, plus my activity, plus at least 500 calories. But I mean, other people, they get 100 calories over and they start putting on, they start putting on weight, like it's their job. Now one thing that goes along with the body's adaptation to calories is also the body's adaptation to exercise. Okay, so me running a mile is not gonna burn the same amount of calories as you running a mile. Our bodies have both adapted differently to how we move. Our bodies adapt to our activity. They adapt to what you put in them. The body is ever changing, always trying to meet its environment, right? So you determine the environment by what you do, what you eat, what, make, what medications you take. You determine the environment, your body adapts. That's why it's so hard for people that wanna do the healthiest thing or everyone thinks that their diet is the best diet. Well, none of this accounts for adaptation, which all of us do. All, all of our environments different. All of our diets are different. All of us have different gene. All of our environments are different. All of our diets are different. All of our environments are different. All of us have different genes. We've all adapted differently up to this point. So there's no one, counting calories isn't the best way. The ketogenic diet isn't the best way. Paleo is not the best way. It all depends on how your body has adapted to the environment you have provided. So that's all I've got to say about resting energy expenditure in the Mifflin equation. I will, I'll, put, I'll also put the equation down in the uh, description below. So if you got any questions or suggestions, just put them down there in the comments section. Until next time.